easy, I'm Septa and you're tuned in to another Ableton Live tutorial. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at another style of gliding bass, but this time with the pads we'll have a bit more melodic content. But before we get started, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone that's bought a sample pack of my website over the last month. It makes a really big difference to me in terms of how much time I can spend making videos, so thanks for your support in that way. We're going to be using Vital today, which is free at the moment, and there's also a preset pack that's available on my website for that if you wanted to. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Cool, so here we are on Side Ableton Live, and as always, I'll play you through the project first. So that'll do. Um, let's dive straight into Vital. I'll just solo the bass group for you first so you can hear a bit clearer what's going on. So I just realized I had the uh, distortion send turned off halfway there, so sorry about that. So let's turn the effects off and have a look at what is going on uh, inside Vital. So I just group all those ones first. So the patch by itself. Sorry, distortion was still on. <laughs> but yeah, a bit of a minor difference anyway. So let's have a look inside Vital and explain to you kind of what's going on and the things it does differently to Serum. Now, after using it for about a month or so, um, it definitely does some things that Serum, as far as I'm aware, doesn't do, which makes it a bit more usable for me and easier to achieve a sound that I'm happy with. So the first thing is, not sure the correct name for it, but it's kind of like a wavetable filter slash modulator. Um, and what it allows you to do is add say, a light, high or a low pass filter, uh, manipulate the waveform, or you know really just change the waveform at the source before you hit any filters or any um, distortions or effects or anything like that. So the first one was a, a sign, uh, sorry, a saw wave or a triangle wave. Um, and the low pass option allows you to basically apply a low pass filter, as I said, straight at the source. So if we just listen to that, first of all. <laughs> It has quite a nice um, resonance to it naturally. So as far as the oscillator is concerned, I've got Unison set on three, 
with only 20% detuning and the phase set on or phase reset set on uh, zero so it always starts in the same point on the wavetable and then I've got it sent to filter one which are down here so if I have a look at number two uh, it's just clean sign no unison again phase set on zero and this one's on direct out so I'm using it as a sub oscillator basically um, where the uh, one above it is set to filter one I've got that high pass so it's allowing the sub to kind of come through cleanly as well uh, number three is again a triangle wave but I've got the oscillator set on or oscillator manipulation set on smear uh, and just kind of found a sweet spot for that no unison on this one uh, and again the phase now is set to being allowed to restart because I want that to create interest over time it's not really there to give me the weight of the uh, base itself and that one's sent to filter one so again it's leaving the sub area low frequencies clear for that uh, sine wave and then we've got a noise oscillator last which I've sent to fil uh, filter two which you can see I've high passed just so it's sitting in the right area um, and giving me the tone that I want. Send all together. Then I've got a couple of LFOs. One is on the level of this, what we'll arguably call it like a texture layer. Um, just giving it some movement and then LFO1 is set on the filter in the effects area. So it works again very similar to Serum. Um, the chorus is really nice, the distortion again is really nice and you've got a couple of uh, other options as well and a nice um, low pass for the reverb so you can do a bit of reverb inside the synth without worrying about the bottom end as well which is nice. Uh, Matrix again works the same as what Serums does and then you've got a few extra options inside uh, the advanced tab. So if we go back to voices I've got some glide set on here. One thing that you have to do if you want it to glide um, without triggering the beginning of another note or you know just say in like a legato mode is these voices when you load and initialize a preset it will be maybe 8 or 16 just make sure that's down to 1 uh, it took me a while to realize that's what it was but then it will kind of flow nicely between um, the different notes so if we turn some of the processing on I'll talk you through that as well so I've got a chain split on here so I can process the mid-range separately uh, at about 100 Hertz with just a glue compressor on the sub to level it out a little bit just to level it out in between the notes um, not because there's movement in the tone itself and then we've got saturator if I turn these on kind of one at a time so just adding a little bit more um, 9 dB of drive and it's only on 12% wet then I've got an overdrive after that one. Again, just adding a little bit of texture in the mid-range. Very uh, low mix. Chorus. And then a glue compressor just to squash that all together a bit. about 5 dB of reduction but then a 5 dB boost if you look at the makeup gain and then EQ just to scoop a bit out the middle to make some room for the drums uh, analyze is not important I was just using that as I was building the sound um, EQ again 
just with a mid side cut to make sure that there's no stereo in the sub frequencies. And then the automation, uh, sorry, the auto filters for automation purposes. And then I've got a dynamic EQ right at the end, uh, just to side chain the kick a little bit. Uh, I find with these gliding style basses, using things like volume automation or uh, duck, which I use a lot of the time, it's a little bit too notchy. I only really wanted it to take enough out of the bass. So when you push the level up, it's not distorting uh, between the two. It wasn't a case of wanting a really clinical side chain uh, and this did that job for me. And then there's a couple of other uh, things that are going on. So I've got a fair bit of automation. One is in the reverb. I've got a distortion on ascend, which is just a guitar pedal, so nothing fancy. And then uh, some noise on there as well. So now you know that, I'll play it all together again. <laughs> So we've got um, the auto filter as well. So that's kind of what the uh, automation looks like. So we've got reverb going up and down, noise at the end of every eight bars, um, some slight variations in distortion, but nothing major. I've got the send on the actual channel pushed quite hard. Uh, so it only needs to be up, you know, I guess that's about 20%. Um, and then a filter to give you a smoother kind of intro and then a distorted next stage and you'd flip back between the two. You could make these a little bit more complicated, but for the purpose of the video, it demonstrates what I want. So we'll have a little chat about the the keys in it as well, because they're, they are working with the bass to give you the, the overall groove. So we'll play those solo together. So in terms of uh, key and no notes that I'm playing, unfortunately I had to freeze and flatten these because of um, analog lab four is quite CPU intensive. So to have three of them and be recording my screen at the same time, it didn't, didn't really like it. So the track is in F. Um, each chord that I'm using, they're all an F major chord. They're just different. Um, different inversions and if you don't know what an inversion is I'll just show you now so if we were to have um, let's just put a piano or something in here that's pretty hideous but it will do So F major, oh sorry, F minor chord. So 
So that, that would be your standard F, F major chord. A couple of things uh, which help can be to add extra notes that are in the same key, um, or oh, sorry, in the same scale to make the chords sound a bit more complex. So the best way to do it if you don't know too much music theory is literally just to move it up one at a time until it sounds right. Um, but there does come a point where the sound you know becomes a little bit too dense so be careful when doing that four uh, to five maximum is usually a sweet spot um, and an inversion is just a, the same notes of the chord but in a different order so usually you'd start with f on the root note which is the beginning note of your chord but what you could do is move that f so it's an octave higher if you wanted or the same with the other notes. Um, and that will give you the same chord but different tonality. So that can be helpful if you know you have a one note bass line or you're unsure about what other chords work or you think, think things don't sound right, then you can use the same chord again and again. So if we put a couple together. And I'll just show you the difference between moving each one of these around. Maybe move that one down. Uh, and obviously if you have four notes in your scale, uh, sorry, four notes in your chord, then you can do this with those notes as well. So if I add... So these are all exactly the same, but they'll sound different. So that's the way and a way you can get more from using uh, one chord in your progression if you wanted to. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So in terms of the progression over time, I've made sure that the places where I have distortion or there's distortion coming up, there isn't much of the chord playing because they're going to conflict with each other. Um, and I've tried to, there is more than one chord playing here at a time. Um, I've tried to follow the progression of the bass line at the same time. So if we listen to that again. Hopefully you can hear the relationship between those two. <clears throat> so that's about it um, for this video really. I really just wanted to talk about uh, Vital and get you started on it and hopefully give you some ideas into making this more melodic style. So I'll have another video up next week. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Voices.